Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. Welcome to our channel everyone. My name is Dr. Nitin Chora. Now, a lot of economists seem to be upbeat about the economy despite the Omicron variant. Now, the stock market has been going through some wild fluctuations. However, a lot of economists seem to be upbeat. But the big question is, what does the American consumer think? Well, folks, you know and I know as American consumers that we don't live by data points. We don't live by what economists tell us. So what is the truth? Where does the truth lie? That is what I'll explore in this episode of Ignition Time. Welcome to our channel, everyone. Please click like, please subscribe, please enable notifications. Let's start with this headline on your screen from the Washington Post. Economists may be upbeat, but consumers don't live by data points. In fact, the Scottish historian Thomas Carlyle, and I'm going to quote from this article, is credited with describing economics as the dismal signs. I'll quote directly from the article, but in the current climate, it's some economists who are upbeat and plenty of consumers have a dismal outlook. In fact, the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen testified before the Senate Banking Committee and she said, I'm confident that our recovery remains strong and is even quite remarkable. Betsy Stevenson, the professor of economics and public policy at the University of Michigan, tweeted this on the 24th of November. The typical American is better off today than in February 2020, and that is nothing short of a miracle. Financial writer Felix Salmon and political writer Hans Nichols wrote this for Axios on the 9th of November. The economy is great, but voters don't believe it. The problem here, folks, is a Harris poll in October showed that 68% of our fellow Americans felt their personal financial situation was the same or getting worse. In fact, 77% of people across the world felt that way. In fact, that what that tells us is that things are actually worse in other parts of the world. Jerome Powell, who, by the way, is going to continue as the Federal Reserve Chair, said, challenges and opportunities come with unprecedented reopening of the economy. The problem here, folks, is that a lot of consumers are not happy. You know this and I know this. Milk costs more. Gas costs more. I live in New Jersey and I remember paying close to $4 a gallon of gas at the gas pump. I mean, this is incredible, folks. I mean, uh, things are getting more and more expensive and more and more people are starting to reassess their spending habits. I believe that there are two different Americas emerging. One for the rich who don't care about how much they spend and the other for the rest of us who essentially have to pinch pennies even if we are earning more money. So what's happening, folks? Higher end consumers have actually started to cut out purchases because they're asking themselves, hey, do I actually need this? And lower income shoppers are not spending because they cannot afford what they once could either because they lost their job or they have reduced income, or things simply cost more. Now, do we expect things to get back to normal? Maybe. But I believe that the economic impact of this pandemic and also of the Omicron variant could indeed be long-lasting. I believe that we'll change our spending habits, even though we will fundamentally be spenders. And I do believe that the American consumer is going to help America recover. I believe the American consumer is going to help the world recover. The problem is that more and more of our fellow Americans are finding that, hey, things are getting more expensive and we can't spend as much as we used to. I do believe the world is changing and we are going through a very frustrating and a very difficult time. I mean, take your local restaurant or your local diner, for example. In fact, speaking of diners, the local diner in my neck of the woods actually shut down. It used to be a place where my wife and I and the kids would hang out every weekend and it shut down. It's gone. I mean, a lot of local establishments have gone. Even if your local restaurant is open, and by the way, if you pay close attention, the small mom and pop shops have actually shut down. The larger chains, the, the restaurants that are part of larger chains, they are the ones that seem to have survived uh, for different reasons because they have more financial backing. You know, there's a corporate entity there. But the smaller mom and pop shops have in fact shut down. Even if a small mom and pop store is open, you'll find that their costs have gone up. It's costing them more for meat, for milk, for eggs. It's costing them more to hire and keep employees. And as a result, what they do is pass on the costs to their consumers. A lot of small businesses are now facing skyrocketing costs on top of labor shortages. And I can tell you that at the end of the day, I believe we will get back on track. But, but 
I think that we are going to see the psychological impact for years, potentially even decades, as people start to reevaluate their spending habits and ask themselves, do I really need this? Do I really need to do this? What can I do to cut my expenses? What can I do to live frugally? And that, in the end, could could lead to a long-term detrimental impact on the economy. A lot of economists should not be in a rush to say, hey, we are recovering. At the end of the day, folks, there's only one thing that's going to decide whether we recover as a country, and that should be should be the American consumer, should be how you feel, how I feel, and how we we decide to start spending money. And I can tell you that there's a lot of media media coverage of, hey, the economy is recovering, and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, the big question is, how do you feel about the economy? In fact, I want you to let me know below. Do you agree with economists who say, hey, you know, things should be back on track? Are you feeling the impact financially? Are you cutting back your expenses? And are you becoming a little bit more thrifty? Are you spending less money than you used to? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Because at the end of the day, folks, economists can say one thing. But you and I, we don't live by data points. We are human beings with lives, with jobs, with families, with responsibilities. We have bills to pay. We have a lot of responsibilities that we need to that we need to keep up with. And at the end of the day, we make decisions based on what is best for our life. We don't live by data points. We are human beings. We are not statistics. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you agree with economists or are you actually feeling the pain at the grocery store? Are you feeling the pain at the supermarket? Are you feeling the pain at the gas station? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time. Please click like, please click subscribe, please enable notifications. A ton of effort goes into the creation, the production of these videos. And you can reward us, you can reward me and my team by clicking like, by clicking subscribe and by enabling notifications. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.